Hi, it's Scott with Michigan Pool News, and I'm here with Andy Gathier from uh, Aquatic Source. And uh, one of the things we talked about earlier with Kevin Rodenbow was titration testing. And now we're going to kind of talk a little bit more about how important that is. So Andy's going to point out to us what, um, what you do when you find out that you've got some combined chlorines in the pool. So Andy, what do we got on the chart here? First we've got is you test the water and you get your free available chlorine. That's the good chlorine in the pool. Then you do a total chlorine test and that'll give you, in this instance, we had two parts per million of free available chlorine. We did a total chlorine uh, test and we ended up with three parts per million. Giving you a total of, a combined is subtracting the free available from total, you get a one part per million of combined chlorine. To get rid of combined chlorine, you have to hit breakpoint chlorination. And to do that, you need to get ten times the amount of the combined chlorine into the pool. So to hit breakpoint chlorination, we have a combined chlorine reading of one part per million. So you have to multiply that by ten, giving you a ten. You need to put ten parts per million of chlorine into the pool. In a liquid chlorine of ten percent solution and a pool of a hundred thousand gallons, you would put ten gallons of liquid chlorine is the equivalent of a ten part per million shock in a hundred thousand gallons of water. How long, how long does it take for it to reach breakpoint chlorination? Your breakpoint starts and it can take anywhere from 8 hours to 24 hours to completely do a breakpoint. When you do a breakpoint chlorination, if you look at the top of the water, you can actually see little bursts on top of the water, like little starbursts. That's actually it gassing it off into the air. So there, your, your HVAC better be kicked in on an indoor too. That's correct, because all the shocking or breakpointing actually brings the, uh, breaks it out of the pool into the air. When it's in the air, the HVAC has to be purged out of the building or else the combined chlorine that you now got out of the water is going to drop back in. Just fall back in. Yeah. And then and then high levels can be fixed with biosulfate. Yeah. Um, if you biosulfate want. But if you do it too early, you might do it before a break point. You're going to not hit your break point and get it back down because typically when you do a complete uh, break point chlorination, the amount that you put in is the demand that's required to hit break point the next morning you should be pretty close to where you started okay give or take one or two parts so it's still a safe swimming pool. is there a, is there a is there a model for uh, a client that might be using a um, a powdered chlorine yeah if you're using a, a non stabilized shock like calcium hypochloride uh, shock you can also look in the Taylor book and the different percentage if you're using 12 percent solution of chlorine instead of the 10 mm -hmm. that we were talking about in the Taylor book it tells you how much uh, based on the percentage of chlorine you're using to get one part per million and you just take the amount out of the book and multiply by 10. Great. Give you the breakpoint chlorination. All right, we're talking a little bit about this today too because we do have a lot of clients that um, hit breakpoint all the time but still can't get rid of the combines because of HVAC systems. So. Uh, we've got one in particular that it would, uh, when they shock the one pool to get it out of there, the actual, the second pool that's in the same building would actually raise after a break point <laughs> because the HVAC wasn't taking enough air out of the room. Well, thanks, Andy. Mm -hmm. Scott from Michigan Pool News, Andy from Aquatic Source. Have a great day.